I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make a badge logo, something um, simple using just the shape tools and some stroke effects and um, creating some little banner type things on your badge. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with this shape. So I'm going to go ahead and use a circle. And this will work with any shape that you use. So just be aware. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch my stroke color to black. I want a stroke color, no fill. All right, so I opened up my appearance panel. You can see here, I have my appearance panel open. I have one stroke, I have no fill. Um, I can make a copy of this guy. So what I'm gonna do is make sure it's selected. So I click on it, it's blue. And if I come down here, I can duplicate that stroke layer, okay? So what I wanna do is actually, <clears throat> excuse me, make this first stroke. I'm gonna make it pretty thick. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump it up and you can see it changing as it's, um, I'm changing the number. I'm gonna go ahead and make it 20. Um, it does need to be selected. So if it's not selected and you're bumping up that number and nothing is happening, that is why it does have to be selected. So make sure that it's highlighted blue. Um, and I did add a second stroke by clicking on duplicate. I'm going to go ahead and change the second one to white, the color. Oops, not yellow, white. And I'm going to bump up the um, number two. Let's go to about 15. Okay, so it already looks like I have two different lines that I've created, right? But I've only created one line just by adding strokes to them. Um, I have created this crazy looking effect. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate. Uh, let's go ahead and duplicate this black one again. So I'm going to click on duplicate. And then I'm going to click and drag this above the white one. So I have three strokes here, a black one at 20, a white one at 15, and another black one at 20. I'm going to go ahead and see what happens when I lower this. I might need to bump it up to see what happens. Oh, it's not selected, so that is my problem. All right, so let's try that again. So making a duplicate, and that's what happens when it's not selected. And then I can change the color to black. And if I lower the effect, or lower the um, stroke weight, you can see what is going to happen. And now it looks like I have three different strokes, but really, or three different circles, but really it's only one circle with three different strokes and I use the appearance panel. So take a look at my stroke um, layers. Okay, so I have one at 20, one at 15, and one at 10. The middle one is white, and that's how I got that white effect in between the three black lines. All right, so pretty simple. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a banner. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my rectangle tool, and I'm just gonna draw out a rectangle across here, just like that. Change the stroke, turn the stroke off, make it a fill, and go ahead and drag this down a little bit. Okay, so I need to make this so it's kind of like a V. So what I'm going to do is select it, use my pen tool, and click on Add Anchor Point. Okay, so click on your pen tool, click on Add Anchor Point, and right here, right about in the middle on this line, I'm going to go ahead and click. That's going to give me, should give me, a new anchor point. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So now if you look, I've got three anchor points, one, two, three on each side. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and edit those anchor points by using my white direct selection tool. And I'm just gonna click on this one in the middle that I added and pull it in. And that's gonna let me make a banner or an arrow banner. Uh, you probably have to eyeball it, make sure it's kind of even, okay? And already it's looking pretty cool. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and type out a word inside my banner. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and change the color to white because I need to be able to see it. <clears throat> Premium. And let's see how that fits in there. I may need to do some modifications with the sizing. Let's go ahead and change the size and the font. Let's go with something pretty simple. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but if I were, I would probably choose a different font face. All right, so something like that, and then just adjust it. 
So you want the same distance between the top of this eye and the top of your banner as you do between the bottom of the letters, okay? So just keep that in mind that that spacing really does matter. It makes a huge difference, okay? Um, the next thing I'm going to do is, ooh, actually, you know what? I'm going to put this right here, and I'm going to make this one smaller. So let's go ahead and change this. Change this color to black. And then in here, I'm going to type in the word vintage. Let's see. Move it down, make it a little bit bigger. <clears throat> All right, so my baseline, you can see that my G is going below my banner. I don't want that to happen because. Um, it needs to be inside. So I'm just going to extend the size of my banner a little bit. It is a shape. You can resize it. Okay, so just be aware of where your baseline and your ascender is. This is the ascender up here. Whatever is above the middle line, this is your baseline, okay? Um, premium quality. Let's type the word quality down here. I want it to be the same size as this. So this one is 26 using Alpha Sans. Click down here. All right, so it looks like I have less space down here than I do up here. So what I'm going to do is select all of these and just kind of shift them up a little bit. Oops, not the circle, just the banner. All right, so it's looking good. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some stars. So I'm going to click on my star tool and drag just to make a little star holding shift so it doesn't rotate I want it to stay these two points to stay like towards the bottom I'm just going to make a copy holding alt click and drag and then I'm going to kind of bring it down just like this make this a little bit smaller make a copy of the small one holding alt click and drag Make sure your distance is the same between all three stars. And then I'm going to make a copy of these three. So holding, selecting all of them, click on shift, select one, hold shift. While holding shift, I'm clicking on the other two. Click, hold alt, click and drag, and bring those to the bottom. And I'm still feeling like I have more room up top than I do on the bottom. Bring that up just a little bit. And then this is not feeling centered to me, so I'm going to go ahead and... You want to make sure everything is nice and aligned. So what I'm going to do is use this. I'm going to select the circle, select the middle stars, and then I'm going to use my alignment tool, which is right here. All right, that feels good. Okay, so I think I am going to maybe... Let's see, pull this in just a little bit. Oops. And then um, I think I would change the font. Actually, you know what? If I made this capital, let's see what happens. Much better. Um, I think I would maybe make it bold. So a trick um, I should show you is if you don't have the bold option on your text or on the font that you choose, what you could do is add a stroke to it. And that will make it... Um, bold as well. Oops, I'm choosing black. I should choose white. So if you see um, even a one point um, stroke or outline made a huge difference. So just bring that up to one and that looks good. Bring this down just a little bit. All right, so there's my badge logo. Pretty simple, um, very quick, uh, probably less than 10 minutes. All right.